Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a respawning power-up. Now, as you can see, I have a power-up right here, but when I go to pick it up, it disappears forever. So we're going to make it not do that, but I understand that you might not have a power-up yet. So since this tutorial isn't about making power-ups, I do show how to make that medkit though. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to place the code down in the description and you can just copy and paste that into a part and it'll be functionally the same as the one I have here. So, making a spawner. So, some area where the med pack will respawn um, after it's been picked up. So, really, all a spawner needs to be is a part with a script inside that contains some logic. Now, of course, it really doesn't have to be a part necessarily. The part just is it kind of just denotes the position of the med kit. So let me just make this look less boring, make it coagulated, expired blood red. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to rename this part uh, spawner, and then we're going to create a spawner script, and this will contain all of the logic for respawning this med pack. So, the first thing we ha should do um, before we even write a single line of code is to put the med pack, um, drag it over into server storage here. Um, because we're going to have to reference server storage from this um, script so that we can make copies of the med pack to respawn. So to get server storage, we'll type in server storage equals game get service server storage. Um, a few other variables we're going to need. We're going to need the spawner. So spawner equals script.parent. And then the medkit. So to get the medkit, we're going to get the address of the medkit that's in server storage. So we're going to say server storage, find first child medkit, since that's the name of the part that we have in server storage. So if we look over here, we can see that the med pack is no longer here. So we're going to have to make something that creates the med pack when the game starts and create it over the spawner. So I'm going to make a function called init that's going to execute as soon as the script starts. Now inside of init, I'm going to call a function that I haven't defined yet, but um, we're just going to call it spawn power up and we'll create that up here. So inside of spawn power up, what we're going to do is we're going to create a local variable that this is just like a temporary address to the new power up that we're making, and I'll just call it power. What we do to make a copy of the server storage address of medkit is we say power equals the medkit, which is the um, address, and then clone. I'm not sure if it's necessarily the address, but then we're going to set the power ups position to equal the spawner's position. But you'll notice that there's one problem with this. Also, we're going to have to add this, which is just we're going to set the parent to equal the spawner. Um, and that's very important. We'll need that later. But let me show you what's wrong with setting the position to the same position as the uh, spawner. It's not there. <laughs> Oh. Oh. I'm dumb. Okay, just kidding. Uh. Okay, now it's correct. So here's the problem. Uh. It's kind of down here. Since I set the position to be the same position as the spawner, it's just kind of down here in the ground, and that doesn't quite look right. But there's a very easy fix to this. Basically, you know, like XYZ axes? On the y-axis, we want the med pack to float above the spawner, you know, maybe like three studs or so. So we can add to the vector position of the spawner with a new vector 3 that um, contains x, y, and z coordinates. And we're just going to set the y one to be 3, so it'll be the spawner's position plus a vertical um, vector of 3. And now if we try it, 
we can see that the med pack spawns in a reasonable location, but it still doesn't respawn yet. So that's what we're going to do next. And this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was. I did like all this stuff with like timers and like saving what's, but it's actually very simple. Part, which is the spawner is a part, has an event called child removed. And child removed will return basically the name of the object child that was removed. So if we take um, spawner dot child removed, and we can connect that to an anonymous function. Um, just a second, child. Now, an anonymous function is just a function that we're we're not like defining it up here and then calling it somewhere else. We're defining it and calling it in the same spot. So it's just shorthand. This is generally how you um, work with these signals and events as you connect them to an anonymous or lambda function, as they're known in all the programs. Anyway, when the child is removed, all we have to do is just check and see if the child is the med pack. Now, we don't necessarily have to do this, but just in case, just like a fail safe, kind of. So if child.name equals medkit, then basically spawn power up. I feel like that's too easy. Oh, yes, I forgot something. Okay. Um, <laughs> whoops. Okay, so there's one problem with this, and I'll actually show you. So we walk up to the med pack, and it doesn't disappear. But it seems to be resetting, as you can see by the animation. So what's going on? Well, Basically, the signal's being released that the child was removed as soon as we pick up the health pack, and it just creates another one instantly. And there's actually a very easy way to do that. So we can just say wait, and then I'll set up a constant called wait time, and I'll define it up here. So um, constants are usually denoted, their variables denoted by all caps, and by the name constant, they don't change. So Let's just set it to 2 for testing purposes. You might want to set it in your real game to something like 10 or 20, just depending on how fast-paced your game is and how large the map is. Okay, so we just walk up to the med pack and 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, boom! I practiced that. And now we have a respawning um, power-up, and it'll just respawn indefinitely. So ain't that the bee's knees. Hello everyone, and thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a while since I've made my last video. College has made it pretty difficult to do things that aren't college, but I've been like floored by all the support and suggestions and comments I've received um, throughout the semesters. Amidst, amidst the stress that um, my first year of college caused me, it was so encouraging to see that my videos were really helping people and encouraging people to program. Now, if you're new to the channel, please, like subscribe and like and do all those things um i'd really appreciate it it really encourages me to make more videos again thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you soon